So at the fifth stage, which is where I'm at in this dysfunctional family, um, I'm saying yes to myself and to healthy boundaries. And I know what I will and will not do. And I'm grateful as each of my siblings steps up to the plate, does their part. However, uh, we both feel this irritation and frustration from the helplessness because of our learned helplessness. And so it's just do it again. And he is, he's doing wonderfully. <clears throat> so let's see. I was talking earlier about morals and values. And really, uh, asking for somebody's morals and values is asking for their ethics, essentially. <clears throat> so moral may be opposed to immoral and applying conformity to a standard of what is good and right, or it may contrast with intellectual or aesthetic as being concerned with character or conduct rather than achievement, beauty, success, and logical perfection. So you see the moral of the story? <clears throat> My brother is a noble soul. <clears throat> this whole thing has been really hitting my throat chakra because of a childhood of not being able to speak my truth. My brother is a noble soul. It implies uh, noble, implies moral eminence <clears throat> and freedom from anything petty mean, dubious in conduct and character. So, again, moral may be opposed to the immoral because it is concerned with the character or the conduct of a human rather than their achievements, their beauty, success, or perceived success and logical perfection. <clears throat> That's what we're dealing with here. We're healing after 66.6 years. Um, I have a little bit of an outline <clears throat> of what went down. So much to say. I was the invisible child. We each had a different response overall. <clears throat> my brother's was flight. My eldest sister's was fight. The golden child was freeze. And myself, the invisible child, was to fawn. So in the fifth stage, you fawn because you haven't differentiated yet. And so really, I've been ruminating over my lost youth ever since August 2022, y'all. And uh, in the fifth stage, that's where we find one's own personal identity. And that's where we are truly true to ourselves. But you cannot do that as a child of a narcissist. So in reparenting yourself, you have to discover what the fifth stage is. And so, and the author says here, I had avoided the fifth stage in order to feel my insatiable appetite for intimacy and love. Of course, you were a love-starved child. You were looking for it from an unemotionally available male. If you had the misfortune of choosing narcissistic partners like myself, if you just have a guy that doesn't know anything more than what he's been taught, but he's harmless, you can work together to have a more enriching life. I'm not saying all men are bad men. I'm just saying the narcissistic ones are. Just like not all women are toxic. 
that don't want to have relationships, guys. They don't want to have a relationship. <sighs> Women who have healed themselves or are healing and no longer want to live in the dysfunction. So that's where I'm at. Um, it's important that you do you. Because when I was in relationship, I gave more time and energy to the relationship and less and less to myself. And it was actually um, part of the condition of being in the relationship. Many a woman makes it a goal to know her man without knowing herself first. She sees loving him as the solution to her problems, but love soon becomes the center of her problem. She is thinking rather than feeling her way through the relationship and eventually becomes isolated from the very essence of herself. That is tragedy. And so that is the essence of what happens and so without judgment of why, when you are healing from the narcissistic abuse, you reach, you realize this, that's the peak, that's the, that's your Mount Everest. You realize what you've actually been dealing with, okay? But then you have to go through the death zone and the death zone is killing off the, all the old ideas that somebody did something to you. Remember, now you're wise and they no longer can. So go back and pick up that little girl back there. <laughs> I'm the author of these two books. Go back and get the, uh, the little girl back there and bring her into the now. And she's the one that wasn't able to develop her talents and skills. And mine was as a author, a writer. And yes, even a dancer. So, when you are willing to pull back and look at your neglected dreams and fallibles, you may bring a newfound energy into yourself, into your life. You learn to respect what makes you an individual. And therefore, you can also accept everyone else's quirks with acceptance rather than judgment as they judge you. It's so simple. So it goes on to the eighth stage and beyond. But I'm not there. I'm in the fifth stage. I am doing what it is I need to be, which is find my own personal identity and being true to myself. And so the sixth stage is where you find your intimacy and your love. But if you haven't learned at the fifth stage to actually have an identity, to actually truly be true to yourself, then you can't, you're only bringing a broken person into the sixth stage. That's where the fifth stage is where we broke. Know yourself to thy own self be true. Mutuality, you're the measurements, girls. <clears throat> Mutuality, reciprocity, interdependence, but first you have to start with inner dependence. Interdependence are the keys to the game of, of a relationship. If you don't have them, what's the point? So it, <clears throat> in a narcissistic, re abusive relationship, there is no mutuality. There's caving into what they want. There is no reciprocity as you give, 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 and then they want more. Uh, there is no interdependence. There can be a codependence as you become trauma bonded to the game, which is the horror show. It's not this, it's this not so fun house. It's the terror room you want to get out of. It's the haunted mansion of everybody's ghosts. But this person is so unwilling to look at themselves they shove all their bad feelings onto you. And so all that anger and stuff, as their partner, you feel. That's why so many women are uh, actually um, dealing with uh, illnesses if they stay too long in a relationship. Here's the book. Um, I'm going to stitch this into my own personal 
diary uh, and iMovie making. But in the meantime, I recommend this book. Um, and it's by the author of A Year by the Sea and An Unfinished Marriage. She's really quite incredible. And the ISBN is, oh uh, gosh, 07. Six seven nine, I'll say that again. ISBN is zero, but then they have a dash seventy six seventy nine, and a dash fourteen seventy five, and a dash nine. And Eric Erickson is the person who uh, was the creator of the eight stages of childhood development. Joan was his wife. So there's a photograph of her on page whatever. All right, let's go look for it. So there's that. Because this, this is just a book cover. A picture of her, where is she? There she is. So enjoy. I'm from this neck of the woods, Cape Cod and all that. So, is there anything else I had put in here as important to show you? We'll get to that. But right now, the most important thing is what I've been talking about. The fifth stage, okay? It's here we become independent, or also where we became impaired because of our narcissistic abuse from our mother who kept pulling the rug out from underneath us, upstaging us, moving us over so she could be in the center of the drama. She always controlled the show. And in fact, all conversations were dominated by her. And when she left the room to pee, it was a relief. But when she came back, she immediately took over. So now that's where I'm at. And that's where you all should be who missed the fifth stage of Eric Erickson's Eight Stages of Development. Check it out. You gotta love yourself before you can love anybody else. But first you have to allow yourself to be yourself. And as I say so often to my viewers, um, I get to be me now and you get to be you. Heck yeah. Lots of love. And remember, we are about finding our own personal identity and being true to ourselves.